Bridger Aerospace is one of the nation's largest privately held aerial firefighting companies, and it will start trading on the NASDAQ today. And with me is the founder and CEO, Tim Sheehy, to explain the company a little bit. First, congratulations, uh, just making it to an IPO. I know it's a lot of work and a lot of headaches, so congratulations on that. Thanks a lot. It's been quite the journey. Yes, I'm sure it has. So tell me about the history of the company. When was it founded and why? So we were founded in 2014. Uh, we started business operations in about November of that year. And we were 100% veteran founded. I was a Navy SEAL officer. I was wounded in combat uh, overseas and uh, got out of the military and started Bridger Aerospace with the purpose of bringing the aerial surveillance technology that we used in support of ground teams in Iraq and Afghanistan and taking that same aerial surveillance capability with infrared electro-optic imaging and converting that to a public safety task to address things like border security, law enforcement, search and rescue, and of course, wildfire. We started with one plane and two people, and now here about eight years later, we're just about 200 employees growing fast, uh, over 20 aircraft. And uh, as you see today, now in the public markets, we're really proud of it. And it's been a fun journey. No, that's amazing. And it makes total sense that you're in Montana, because I know out West, it feels like every year um, we've got these firefighters going on. Um, so explain your business and how it's grown and why um, do you think we see these fire uh, fire uh, that are, you know, inflicting California, Montana, Idaho, things like that? Absolutely. Well, it's not even just the Western U.S. It's really global at this point. Uh, last summer, Europe had their worst fire year uh, in modern recorded history. Uh, South America burns. Australia has fires every year. So the wildfire crisis is really spreading globally uh, as we see the effects of climate change and urbanization uh, along uh, the wildland urban interface. We're seeing fires become larger. They move faster. They're hotter. And most importantly, it's becoming more and more critical to combat them early because of the amount of settlement we have in wildfire prone areas. So that crisis has really transformed in the last decade uh, to two decades. Of course, our business started right around that time. And, and we experienced a, a pretty rapid uplift in demand from our customer base, which consists of state governments and, and federal agencies. And that demand is really uh, skyrocketing worldwide. So we recognized that, had a technology that was desired by that market, and, and have really leaned into it and seen great successes with the added aircraft like you see behind me, our CL 415 EAF super scoopers, complementing our surveillance aircraft. Um, it, it, I don't think the demand is going to go down anytime soon, unfortunately, um, yeah. but uh, serve that need and we'll continue to grow with it. Well, and you also mentioned border security, and that's, of course, been in the news quite a bit lately. Um, what kind of business do you do with that? Uh, we don't do any, actually. Uh, when we started the business, we were focused on a number of public safety tasks. But within about nine months, it became very clear that uh, the Forest Service's demand for what we were able to do uh, was extremely high and, and very quickly became a pure play company, which we are today, 100 percent focused on wildfire response, uh, climate change related wildfire crises. And, um, you know, as we're looking at kind of a counter recessionary investment thesis now, as we look at 2023 being a fairly unusual year, uh, you know, we're a business that's that's not dependent on that, not consumer spending. Uh, we're federally funded, state funded. And, you know, the, 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 these these um, fires that happen in the U.S. and globally don't respond to, to what the stock market says or what consumer price index says. They're going to burn and they have to be fought. And we're here to fight them. Okay, very interesting point. Now, this is uh, with Jack Creek Investment Corporation. So, is this a SPAC? And kind of explain the um, the business behind it. How much you hope to raise? What would you like to do with the proceeds? Mm -hmm. Well, clearly the SPAC market has transformed a lot in the last several months. And to be honest, we didn't intend to raise any capital with this SPAC. Uh, that wasn't the purpose of it. The purpose was to give us access to the public markets, because as we take a five to 10 year horizon on this business, and we look at how we've grown in the last eight years, uh, we see a lot of uh, increased demand for what we're doing. We want to continue to grow. And being the position we are in now as a company, uh, growing in the public markets will be um, better for us as owners. It'll be easier for us to, to, to acquire new airframes and get new forms of financing uh, as a public created security. So we didn't really do the SPAC with the intent to raise capital. Of course, any small business loves cash and we did get some cash out of the SPAC. So we're, we're excited about that. But overall, uh, redemptions were high as expected. And uh, But the point is we're in the public markets now and we're going to be able to use that currency uh, to grow and diversify and increase the value of our business. And what is the ticker symbol? We are going to be trading under B A E R Bear. Oh, Bear. Okay. <laughs> and um, I, I'm, this is a very capital intensive business. I mean, you need the plane, so the capital raise makes a lot of sense for you to expand and move forward. 
Exactly right. I mean, right behind me here, we have six of these aircraft, and this is a thirty million dollar plane. Uh, so they can be financed, but uh, money's still money. It's expensive to get them, and this is going to uh, make it easier for us to do that more flexibly going forward. Yeah. And I'll talk a little bit about your experiences as a Navy SEAL and how that helped you in terms of starting a business, the skills you learned, and just the, the general life lessons you learned in the military. So I went to the Naval Academy in Annapolis and I met my wife there, actually. She was a Marine officer. So we were in the military together for several years. And uh, as soon as I graduated, which is in 2008, of course, we had two wars ongoing. So uh, five days after graduation, I started SEAL training. And uh, about a week after I finished SEAL training, I was in Iraq on my first mission. So it was a very busy period of time. I did several deployments. I uh, was wounded um, a few times and, and ended up getting out and, and started the business using those lessons we learned. And, and as I mentioned, being a ground force commander as an officer, I was responsible for um, you know the planning and tactical direction of our teams on the ground. And that's when I was introduced to this capability of, of aerial ISR, of having aircraft overhead, giving us that real-time data in infrared uh, and daytime video, and giving us all that kind of um, situational awareness that you wouldn't normally have as, as a as boots on the ground task force. And understanding how the power of that air ground team integrated uh, was a force multiplier. So seeing how how much how many lives were saved and how much uh, expansion of our tactical capabilities existed when we integrated the air and the ground together. Uh, I try to take that same vision and apply it to non-combat related tasks and say, you know, the, the nation can benefit from this just like uh, the military did overseas. And luckily, our thesis held true and and providing that kind of close air support, close to integrated aerial surveillance ended up being um, uh, a force multiplier for the Forest Service as well. Yeah. Well, and it sounds like the the global kind of macro events that are happening, also the timing is right for a company such as yours as well, Tim. So congratulations and great to hear about the company and uh, best of luck going forward. Thanks so much for the time today. Thank you.